A Diplomatic Eating Written by Mass Driver Chapter 1 A Royal Feast Feel free to drop the disguise anytime you're comfortable. Said the guard pony, a sturdy white mare who seemed surprisingly at ease with the royal guard's presence. The staff have been appraised of your visit. Green flame blazed across the body of the royal guest, transforming an unassuming, if unusually tall, unicorn into the unmistakable jet black queen of the changelings. Thank you, said Queen Chrysalis, flexing her wings. In truth, it took almost no effort to maintain a disguise. Being a changeling meant that one was just at home in someone else's skin as one's own. But it was a sign of respect that the princesses were allowing her to be herself, at least here in the castle, where her presence wouldn't cause a panic. I'll be taking you to a waiting room, said the guard, leading her down a wide hallway. I want to assure you that no disrespect is intended, but it may take a moment for Princesses Celestia and Luna to come meet you. Regrettably, there was a, uh, scheduling conflict. I see said Chrysalis, her doubts about this meeting growing deeper. Would you mind telling me what was more important to the princesses than promptly meeting with me? Uh, well... muttered the guard, her voice wavering. Chrysalis smiled, inspiring fear in others put her back in her comfort zone. There was a miscommunication with the princesses. They were told by their assistants to expect you tomorrow, and so today they are off doing, um, leisure activities. They're a bit difficult to reach at the moment, but once they are contacted, rest assured that they will drop everything to come meet you. They arrived at a small but ornate door, and the guard pushed it open. Please, make yourself comfortable. And if you need anything, anything at all, simply ring the bell. On behalf of the princesses, my apologies for the inconvenience. She said. Chrysalis chuckled. The room was lavishly appointed with wide, comfortable couches and plates of food, which Chrysalis could appreciate even if she didn't require the same sort of food as ponies. The room was pleasingly organic in shape as well. The walls were lined with fountains made from natural stone, and the uneven shapes reminded Chrysalis of her hive. She had to admit that she was being treated well, despite her doubts. Of course, it wouldn't do to act gratefully. In my kingdom, she said to the guard, you would be punished merely for delivering bad news to me, to say nothing of what would happen to the one who made the scheduling error in the first place. The guard stood still, maintaining deferential eye contact. Run along, said the queen. I'll be fine here. Light as a feather, Celestia leaned on the balcony outside Luna's bedroom. Her sister was asleep in her bed. Or so it appeared. It wouldn't be the first time that Luna left a dummy under her covers to get the drop on Celestia. The Sun Princess's horn shimmered, and she sent a gentle, subtle investigatory spell over to the sleeping body. More complex spells were possible, but using too much magic would risk waking up Luna. Even while asleep, the Princess of the Moon was highly alert. The spell seemed to confirm Celestia's hopes. The figure in the bed was indeed her sister. With soft hoof steps, she came closer and closer to the bed, casting her gaze from side to side. If Luna was truly asleep, then she should be safe. But it didn't hurt to be wary. Just a little closer 
and Celestia would have her revenge. If Luna thought her crimes would go unpunished, that she could pile indignity upon indignity and get away with it, then she was truly a fool. The light of the sun burned transgressors, and no one was exempt. And then, when she was three or four hoofsteps away from Luna's bed, an enormous tiered cake, at least as big as the one that had been at the royal wedding, fell directly upon her head. Ha ha! shouted Luna, springing up in her bed. We cannot believe that worked. Did you think me fool enough to oversleep upon pranking day? The glow of the sunlight shone from underneath the inches of sponge cake and frosting that coated Celestia's horn. And then her magical aura began to sweep away the cake that still clung to the rest of her body. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, she said, as her magic dug cake out of her ears. I had cake in my ears. We did not fail to notice, said Luna. Between peals of laughter, Celestia's magic picked up a dab of cake from her withers and hovered it in front of her mouth. The cake itself isn't compromised, is it? Not least with hot sauce or somehow enchanted. Dear sister, said Luna, throwing off her covers and rising to her hooves. We know that you have no willpower when it comes to cake. We would not attempt to prank you by spiking it with something distasteful. There would be no sport in it. Mm, I suppose, said Celestia. She tasted the morsel of cake, and it was indeed delicious, and in no way contaminated. Well, the day is young, sister. Plenty of opportunities for me to have my revenge. The waiting room was indeed comfortable, and that increasingly was the problem. Chrysalis wasn't used to comfort, and it wasn't in her nature to wait around for others to act. And sitting in the middle of Celestia's castle, a place full of ponies to be deceived, how could she help but be restless? But she knew that rash action could endanger her diplomatic mission. It could put herself and her children at risk, so she gave herself some rules to follow, as she assumed the form of the guard who had bought her here. She would not harm any pony, obviously. No sneaking into secured areas. Nothing that would suggest she was attempting espionage. She'd have loved to attempt espionage, actually, but her agents in the field had given her reason to believe that security at the castle's anti-changeling security measures had been strengthened since the royal wedding. Too risky. For a while, Chrysalis simply roamed the halls, enjoying the salutes from lower-ranked guards than the one she was disguised as. She preferred deep, groveling bows, but a Chris salute had its virtues as well. Her path took her upwards towards the room she knew to be the bedchambers of the princesses. A peek inside would be fun. Maybe too risky? Perhaps just risky enough. She came to Luna's bedroom first, a door the very same navy blue of her coat, and inscribed with her cutie mark. It was unguarded, but Chrysalis let her magic probe for any spells that might bar her entry or set off any alarm. This venture might prove to be too risky after all, but she just had to try. Hmm, <laughs> said Luna pridefully circling her bedroom. Has she not learned? The Princess of Dreams possesses the home field advantage in her bedchamber. She looked up to the ceiling, at the spot between her bed and her balcony, where she'd levitated an enormous cake for almost an hour hour as she waited for her sister to try and get a drop on her. It could not have gone better. 
she said, walking to the spot where Celestia had landed on her balcony and retracted her sister's steps. Exactly as planned, she landed right here. And so slowly and carefully, she stepped ever closer to her peacefully sleeping sister. She hovered a hoof over the spot where the cake had dropped on Celestia, a section of the floor still covered in white frosting and spongy cake. And then, so confidently in victory, she brought her foot down on the floor, and her hoof set off a magical trap that Celestia had cast on the floor when she had been wiping off the cake from her body. The bounce trap was a spell custom made for pranksters. It bounced the victim in the desired direction and gave them a temporary force field that was strong enough to protect them from the impact that would follow. Celestia had aimed the trap towards the door, planning to fling Luna towards the door to her bedchamber and idly knock her into the wall when Celestia was there to see it. But Celestia wasn't in the hall at that moment. Instead, Chrysalis was in the otherwise empty corridor, facing the door as it burst open and Luna tumbled through it. Her mouth went wide in shock, just in time for Luna's backside to plunge straight into it. The shock made Chrysalis drop her disguise. Not that there was anyone around to see it, and the force was enough to embed Luna's rump halfway down Chrysalis' throat. What is this? demanded Luna, even as her body began to slide deeper, pulled in by the muscles of Chrysalis' throat. Chrysalis actually didn't use her throat to swallow food all that often, but her body was strong overall, and her throat muscles were no exception. Her long ebony throat expanded to several times its size, big enough to accommodate Luna's round rump and expanding even more to take in the top of her legs. Release me, protested Luna, trying to wiggle free but unable to find any leverage. Chrysalis, her mouth completely full, mumbled something that might have been an apology. She didn't exactly want to eat Princess Luna, or at least she didn't want to deal with the political consequences of having done so. But she couldn't actually stop herself at this point. Luna's forelegs were already inside her mouth, and the Moon Princess's struggle just tickled her tongue. Unfortunately for Luna, they did nothing to free her from the Changeling's gullet. Luna squirmed and kicked to free herself, finally turned her head to see what was happening. Queen Chrysalis? She said in disbelief. Was this your plan all along, villain? Chrysalis mumbled a denial, but she had half a pony in her throat, and her words were entirely unintelligible. Luna kicked her forelegs, trying to make contact with the ground, but Chrysalis held her neck high as she swallowed down more and more of the princess, and Luna's hooves had nothing to gain traction on. This attack will not go unanswered, villain! shouted Luna. The princess closed her eyes in concentration, and a blue spark flared on the tip of her horn, but nothing more. Chrysalis, despite her worries about the consequences of eating an equestrian diarc, chuckled. She knew what was happening. Her body, like her throne back in her kingdom, possessed an anti-magic field. It was only strong enough to affect things that were inside of her. However, or in this case, halfway inside of her. Luna's forelegs were still kicking and her mouth was still launching threats and protests, but her rump was already deep inside Chrysalis. The changing queen felt Luna's bottom hit her stomach the weight of it making her moan. Chrysalis subsided, mostly on emotional energy, and she wasn't accustomed to the feeling of being physically full. But it was a good feeling. Her belly bulged with the shape of Luna's form, and she reached a foreleg up to caress her bloated belly. She'd never eaten anything this big before. Certainly nothing that was still alive and kicking, but she found herself... Enjoying it. 
As her body went deeper, Luna's thrashing legs hit Chrysalis's lips. She wasn't going to go any further down until those legs stopped kicking. So Chrysalis took hold of them with her magic and tucked them against the princess's body. Luna's protest grew louder, but now that her body was more compact, it slid easily into Chrysalis's engorged throat. As the shape of Luna's forelegs descended down Chrysalis's throat, the princess's protest grew angrier still. The moon shall punish thee! She shouted, and Chrysalis was amazed that no guards responded to the royal cancelot voice echoing down the halls. Maybe there was a soundproofing spell at work? Thy dream shall be haunted by our vengeance! Yelled Luna, as her neck slipped down Chrysalis's throat. Most of her weight had settled into Chrysalis's belly by now, and the Changeling Queen felt her knees starting to wobble under the weight. Her belly hung halfway to her knees now, more full than it had been in her entire life. At long last, Luna's head disappeared down Chrysalis's throat. The queen almost fell to her knees when Luna's full weight settled into her stomach, making her bloated belly hang halfway to the ground, the shape of Luna still thrashing weakly inside her. But she was held too tightly by the queen's stomach to truly fight. The feeble kicks in her belly actually felt kind of good, almost like a massage. Queen Chrysalis felt her throat return to its normal size and put a hoof to the side of her mouth. She stretched her cheek something fierce, getting her mouth around Luna. But at least it was over with now. Or maybe not quite over. Chrysalis saw the cool door to Celestia's bedchamber begin to open, and she reflexively shapeshifted into the pony who had the most right to be where she was. Princess Luna. The disguise also served the purpose of concealing her bulging belly. Sister, said Celestia with a smirk. Did I hear the sound of the bounce trap activating? And then an alicorn flying uncontrollably through the door of her bedroom? Well done, sister, said Chrysalis, flawlessly mimicking Princess Luna's voice. She was reasonably sure she could imitate her archaic manner of speech as well, but talking to the pony who knew Luna best was still risky. Best to keep the conversation short. If there are no further indignities in store, I will go and collect return to our daily sleep. Conceding prank day so early, Luna? said Celestia, or are you simply preserving your strength for our meeting with Queen Chrysalis tomorrow? Well, this could be fun. Just what do you think of the Changeling Queen, sister? Celestia sighed. My opinion on her hasn't changed, Luna. Young Princess Twilight has made great strides in combating threats to Equestria with the power of friendship, and the Queen would make a powerful ally. But, prompted Chrysalis, but she attacked me in my home. She imprisoned Princess Cadence and used vile magic on the head of my royal guard. I'd prefer to have her as a statue in the Cancelot Gardens. Her presence in my castle is an insult, but I will bear it. For the sake of my little ponies. Well, said Chrysalis, trying not to let her displeasure show. You've certainly made your feelings more than clear, sister. I suppose I will be retiring to... I intend to keep her on a short leash, said Celestia. She is a tyrant who rules through fear, Luna. She is not the equal of you or me. If there is to be peace between us, she must first be bought to heal. Now that was simply too much. Chrysalis's horn glowed green, and before Celestia could react, her back legs were lifted off the ground and her body was shoved forward. Chrysalis held her mouth open, dropping her disguise just in time to give Celestia a look at her. The Sun Princess's yelp of surprise was muffled 
as her head plunged into Chrysalis's throat. And once her horn was deep in the changeling queen's throat, her magic was likewise muffled. Chrysalis surrounded Celestia's body with her magic, lifting up her body. Rather than holding her tight in a telekinetic aura, she left it a little loose to give Celestia a little room to struggle. She'd enjoyed the feeling of Luna's struggles, and she wanted to duplicate the feeling with Celestia. With her magic, she fed Celestia into her mouth, feeling her throat bulging again as Celestia's long neck slid past her tongue. Muffled shouts shook her body as Celestia's stridently protesting mouth went deeper into her gullet, and Chrysalis smiled as best she could. She opened her mouth wider as she prepared to take in Celestia's barrel and forelegs. The train wasn't so uncomfortable now that she'd done it once before today. Eating ponies was starting to be fun, actually. Although, she was a little concerned about fitting both royal sisters into her belly at once. Her stomach, still weakly squirming, hung below almost to her knees and she wasn't sure how much space she had left. But she'd already made her decision. No going back now. She pulled Celestia in further, feeling the top of the princess's forelegs slide past her lips. Her legs were kicking as best they could, but Chrysalis's magic was holding her firmly enough that she could offer no real resistance. The shape of her legs flowed over Chrysalis's tongue, and Chrysalis thought she tasted something sweet on Celestia's coat. Something like cake frosting? Surely it couldn't be Celestia's natural flavor. Chrysalis felt Celestia's head hit her stomach where she joined her sister. There was no light in Chrysalis's belly, but when Celestia's head bumped against Luna's, the two of them may well have guessed what was happening. All Chrysalis knew for sure was that their muffled voices and feeble struggles grew more desperate at that point. Her tummy buzzed with inaudible voices, and it squirmed with the shape of kicking limbs, but neither of them could fight hard enough to escape. Celestia's wings, too, were struggling against Chrysalis's maw, but they were held in place just as securely as her limbs, and Celestia's torso sunk deeper, her spasming wings tickled the top of Chrysalis's mouth, and then the top of her throat. As more and more of Celestia's mass settled into her stomach, Chrysalis felt a strain in her full, hanging belly. It felt good to be full. To have this squirming mass hopelessly swallowed up inside of her body, but her tummy couldn't take too much more. Doing her best to ignore the stretching in her belly, she pushed Celestia further in, tasting the remnants of frosting on the princess's flank. She ran her flank along the side of Celestia's rump, teasing her cutie mark and felt her back legs kick involuntarily. The princess's backside was enormous, but with a little extra magical force, Chrysalis managed to push it... Chrysalis managed to push it past her lips and down her throat. Chrysalis let out a heavy, satisfied sigh as Celestia's body landed in her stomach. The two squirming princesses together gave Chrysalis a belly that nearly dragged on the floor. A gigantic round bulge whose surface flowed with the shape of wriggling limbs. <sighs> Said Chrysalis, letting her mouth relax and her throat return to its normal width. I'd better get the hell out of here. Please, your highness said the guard pony, falling behind Chrysalis as she made her way to the castle exit. If there's anything I can do to convince you to stay, it would be our top priority to keep you comfortable until the princesses can't be found. No need, said Chrysalis. A few moments ago, she'd returned to her waiting room, rested her fat, squirming belly, and then summoned a guard to announce that she was leaving. At the moment... She was using her magic to hold her belly in, but it wasn't easy, even for one as powerful as the Changeling Queen. Their inattention has taken up too much of my time today. 
tell the princesses that I am willing to work with them in the future. But I am not pleased. Haughtily, she flipped her tail and strode through the castle gates. She knew her message would never reach the princesses, but she needed a plausible excuse for leaving in a rush. Once she was outside the gates, she hastily trotted past the guards and found a dark cobblestone alleyway away from onlookers. Groaning with relief, she released the magic that was holding her belly in, letting it fall nearly to the floor. Once again, she felt the squirming of two powerful alicorn bodies fighting in vain to escape from inside her. The changeling queen felt a burp rising in her throat, and she released it, surprising herself with the length and volume. She smiled and sighed happily. Subsiding on love was fine, but eating ponies was fun. Such a powerful feeling when they slid down her throat. And such a wonderful sense of fullness when it was done. Chrysalis wanted to feel this way for a long time. And she expected she would, since the two princesses in her belly weren't going anywhere any time soon. Yeah. It's my life. Have you ever loved someone so much you've given on for? Not the experience.